Welcome to the Opus Projector Tool Training. In this video, we will talk about uh, the, the CAN protocol J1939 and specifically how to set up a CAN message, uh, a J1939 message that should be sent from the device. First, we will go through the uh, necessary settings just very quickly. First of all, of course, you need to have set up the correct baud rate for the CAN port that you want to use. And secondly, we go to terminal and owner ECU configuration and we have to tell the program that we want to use J1939 on whichever CAN bus uh, you want to use it. So we will edit and this will give us some settings right here. Um, the settings in the middle are for the Opus device. The main thing that you can set up here is the preferred source address address of the device in the J1939 bus. I will leave it at 54, but you of course should give it an address that fits your, uh, your system. You can also set the address claim to dynamic to enable a dynamic uh, exchange of or, or uh, switching of addresses if necessary. In the bottom, um, you can make settings or you can add ECUs and make settings for them. There is an ECU pre-selected, the so-called any ECU, which is used for um, broadcast messages. But in any case, you should always enter the ECU or ECUs in your system that the Opus devi uh, device will talk to. I will just call this J1939 ECU and edit. And it will give me also the selection of a static or dynamic address claim. And I can also set the source address to whatever the actual ECU in the system has. So that's it. Now our Opus device will talk J1939. And all we need to do is set up our transmit message um, to send the target RPM that I have created here as a variable to the ECU. So we can use this shortcut here and open the mappings dialog for J1939. So first of all, we have to create a mapping. I will just call this PGN0. The type needs to be set correctly. This cannot be changed later. So set this to transmit and then we click add and it enables a whole lot of settings. So let's go through them. Um, the name can be changed. I did that uh, on top here. Um, the description is purely internal. You can enter something. It will be good for colleagues if they need to change something, but it is not uh, uh, anything that goes on the device. There is a uh, normally the uh, uh, mapping variable type is uh, used with the lengths of the variables, but you can also switch that to a delimiter based uh, mapping. Um, this is very rarely used. Um, if you do that, you can use uh, you can change the delimiter that will be used here. Um, this should only be used if your ECU needs that uh, needs this type of message. Normally, it will be a, a, a length. Here we have the transmit to setting. I will set this to J1939 ECU as this is the ECU that I have set up and that I want to uh, send my my message to. Little or big endian is a setting that will be um, dictated by the ECU. If your ECU only can uh, uh, talk big endian, you need to uncheck this. Otherwise, normally I think little endian is used much more often. This is a very important setting, the mapping length. Um, it defines, it's basically the data length. So how big is your, is your CAN message? In J1939, uh, the uh, CAN message can be much longer than the usual 8 bytes. Um, if you enter something bigger here, it will automatically use the transport protocol to uh, transmit this message. But in our case, we will stick with the normal uh, 8 bytes. Here we will enter the actual PGN, but not all uh, 29 uh, bytes of the of the PGN, but only the core. There is a little information uh, in the bottom right here. As you can see, for broadcast PGNs, we will enter, for example, FECA, 
So not the priority and not the source address. This will all be filled out automatically. And for peer-to-peer -peer PGNs, we will just enter the, the core PGN and then a zero for the destination address as the actual destination address will be determined by this setting here. So one more reason to use the uh, correct ECU in this in this place. So since we want to um, create PGN0, I will just write a zero here. Basically, I will leave it as it is. The priority, I think it is very rarely used, but um, if it is necessary for your ECU, you can set that to, to whatever you want. Next, we have um, request settings. Um, this is a way for the ECU to request the sending of this message. So if this, if this is something that your ECU um, wants to do, you can check this and then you can set up a proprietary message um, that the ECU has to send to the Opus device and then the Opus device will um, send the actual transmit message. So in these um, byte fields, you have to enter how the data of the of the message will look, and um, then when the Opus device receives this message, it will send this message. But we won't need that. Um, then we have use as write request. Um, this is interesting if you have variables uh, with the owner of the ECU. Normally, only the owner of a variable can change the value. So if you set up a variable with the ECU as owner, the device or the P client cannot change the value of this variable. So if such a variable is included in this mapping, it will send out a write request to the ECU saying like, um, please, I want to change this variable. Is it OK? And then the ECU can or cannot, depending on, on what, it, what it wants to do, uh, can send a confirmation that the value is actually changed, or if it is out of bounds, it will it will reject it. And here in the bottom, we have also one of the most important settings, when and how should the, uh, the message be sent. There is a transmission period, so if you want a periodical sending, you can just enter a value in milliseconds here, for example, 20, and then the message will be sent every 20 milliseconds. You can do this, or, or additionally, you can um, send the mapping, for example, on any variable change. This means any variable that is included in this mapping, which we will do right next, um, changes its value, and then the message will be sent. So if you have a transmission period of zero, which means no periodic transmission, the message will only be sent if any of the variables within the mapping change their value. Or in other words, um, whenever it's, uh, uh, there is new information regarding these variables. You can also send them on specific variable change. Now, the nice thing here is that this is not only for um, the variables within the mapping, but this is for all variables. If you, if you click this button, you can see that I can choose any variable that I have in the project. It's mainly only predefined variables. But the idea here is that you can have something like a sending trigger. So you can um, use an internal variable specifically for this purpose. And whenever you change or whenever you want to send this message, you just add one or subtract one from this variable, and then the message will be sent. So you have complete control. So in our case, we will stick with the 20 milliseconds and no, um, no other, other sending um, uh, settings. OK, um, now we just have to put in a variable. We do this in the visual can mapping. You can also use this uh, uh, table-based look, but I find the visual can mapping much more intuitive, and it just makes sense. So. Here we have a graphical representation of our CAN message. As you can see, we have um, byte 1 to byte 8 are in dark gray. All the rest, I told you that uh, J939 messages can be very long, exactly 1785 bytes. They are all deactivated because I use this setting. If I say uh, the message is only 4 bytes long, 
only the first four bytes can be used and everything else is deactivated. Back to eight. And now I have here um, a list of all the variables in the project. So my variable was something with RPM. So I just enter this and it will filter live. And I can just, here I can see some information about the variable. And I can just drag and drop this variable anywhere within the mapping. I will just put it on byte one, bit one. And you can see it will set up my message, my, my variable right here. So the variable has 16 bits, so it goes over two bytes. Um, normally in J1939, um, the uh, PGN structure is very strict, so I just have to follow the rules. But if your ECU does something a little bit different, for example, it sends it like this, no problem, you can just set it up. One of the drawbacks in our uh, Opus projector right now is we don't have all the we don't have a, a pre-populated PGN list that you can choose from where everything will already be there. This is not something that we can do yet. It will it is something that we have on the table, but right now you need to create your messages manually. Okay. If you want to remove a variable from the from the visual camera, you can just drag it out of this uh, box and it will go away. Let's put it back in. Okay. Um, some more settings here in the bottom. Let's say um, you don't want to actually transmit all 16 bits of this variable, but you know that only the, the lower 8 bits will be, uh, will be used. Then you can change the length here to uh, 8 bits. There will be a little exclamation mark here, a little warning. Here in the bottom, attention, mapped length 8 bit, original length 16 bit. So it just tells you what you have set up. And just to make you aware, don't forget, you have done something here. Because if this ever changes, if this variable has value changes that go beyond 8 bits, you will not transmit them on the bus. Only the first 8 bits will be used. But let's go back to the original 16. Um, and you can also um, do some data manipulation. Um, there is a formula written down here, which basically it explains all of that. So in the original setting, the variable will be sent as it is, but you can make a lot of settings to manipulate it. Let's look, take a look at it. Here is the original variable value, and an offset to can be subtracted from this original value. Then from this, re this result, it can be a, a scale by a scaling factor. And the result of that, there is another offset that can be subtracted. And then the whole thing can even be bit masked and it can also be bit shifted. So you can really do a lot of um, manipulation, calculation and also bit manipulation, if this is something that you need. Normally, probably not. So we will just keep it like this and we will click OK. And that's basically it. Now this message will send every 20 milliseconds, just as we have set it up here and you're good to go. See you in the next video.